This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So let's talk about moving away from Apple and building your first PC. What's up? This is John from John Brands for Photography. And as a photographer, I've noticed that a lot of people tend to swear by Apple computers like they're basically the only way to be able to edit your photos on a computer. But as we all know, all the Adobe products work on both Windows and Apple computers. So about three years ago, I built my first PC and honestly, it changed my whole mind about only buying Apple computers. And this is coming from someone who used Apple computers for 10 years and also worked in the Apple stores for about five years. So today I wanted to talk to you all about three advantages to building your own PC, as well as taking a look at the new build I just did, which is a Hackintosh. If you're not familiar with Hackintoshes, definitely check out my old video up here, but basically it's a way for you to build your own computer and still have Mac OS, so you get the best of both worlds. So let's go ahead and talk about the three advantages to building your own machine, as well as take a look at my new build. So the first reason to build your own PC is probably the most important one, which is cost. Building your own PC saves you a whole bunch of money. And as a business owner, that is huge because the more money you can save is the more income you actually make at the end of the year. Apple computers are awesome, don't get me wrong, but as far as their computer specs, you're paying a lot extra just for the name brand and also the quality of the build itself. A lot of the times with building your own PCs, you're able to get the same power of a machine for like half the price of a Mac. Just take a look at the specs of the Hackintosh that I just built. And if you compare that to let's say a Mac mini or an iMac, I'm basically matching the specs, if not more, for way cheaper. I spent around $1,200 to $1,000 for mine, whereas I'm gonna have to pay up to at least $2,000 to get a machine with the same specs that I have. So if you're looking to save money, building your own machine is definitely the way to go. Next up is upgradability. Unfortunately, with Macs, you're not really able to upgrade just about anything. So because of that, when your computer starts getting slow, you basically have to swap the whole thing out and get a brand new computer. If you're building your own machine, you can actually just take the part out that's slowing your computer down or upgrade the one thing that's most important to you. So let's say you start doing some video editing on top of your photo editing, and now you need a better graphics card. Well, when you build your own machine, you can basically just take that graphics card out and pop in a new one. And you can choose which new one you want as well. So you don't have to go all the way to the top end. You can go with something that was new a while ago, but is like old now and good enough for you and just plop that in there. And that goes for basically every piece in your computer, your graphics card, your processor, your motherboard, your RAM. At any point in time, you can just plop something out and put it right back in any piece you want. You can get used stuff, you can get new stuff. The upgradability is just endless as far as building your own PC. Whereas with Apple computers, basically you just have to replace the whole thing, which is never, never a plus. And then the last reason to build your own machine is actually the ability to make it a Hackintosh. Again, if you're not familiar with making Hackintoshes, basically it's building your own PC and loading Mac OS on it. Now it's not the easiest process, but honestly, it's not that hard at all. And when you get it working well, you have a full blown Mac. My main machine dual boots between Windows and Mac OS, and I use the Mac OS side for all my video editing, and then the Windows side for all my photo editing. And then the machine that I just built is basically just a Mac. I didn't put Windows on it at all. It's just Mac OS Catalina. So having this choice between any operating system that I want is huge, and I can still get all the stuff that I loved from Apple computers while also saving myself money. And if you're scared of Hackintoshing, really don't be. It's not that hard at all. There's a lot of guides online. And if you like to tinker, you're going to love the process. It's actually kind of fun. Check out this video up above that will basically walk you through loading Mac OS on your PC with the open core process. So now that we've talked about the advantages to building your own machine, let's go ahead and talk about my new build. What I want to do is show you kind of the process I went through so that if it's your first build, you can kind of see how it goes down and the fact that it's really not that hard at all. I won't be going over how to load Mac OS on your new machine, but again, that video I linked to up above earlier will definitely lead you to the right place. So let's go ahead and look at my recent build and talk about the steps you'll need to take to make your first build. So to start out with your build, you wanna go ahead and prep your case. Your case is where everything's gonna sit. Basically, it's the body of your computer. 
I'm using the Dan A4 SFX case, which is a nice small form factor case. For your first build, I would not suggest doing anything in a small form factor case because you're just not used to building and you really have to know what you're doing when you're in a small case like this or you'll have a hard time building. My first computer, I tried to do a small form factor build and I failed. So I ended up moving to a mid tower. So seriously, don't start with small form factor. Now it's time to prep my motherboard. The motherboard is basically like the nervous system of your whole computer. It's gonna house all of your major parts. So you can see them here, my processor, memory, graphics card, and an SSD. I just wanted to point these out so you'd have a better idea of what you're looking at when you see a motherboard. When you first start building, it looks like a lot, but honestly, it's like Legos. You just have to know where the pieces go. So the cage in the center is where your processor goes. Be very careful at this point because you can mess it up. It has little pins in it. You just need to set it down gently. Don't push it, don't move it around, and then go ahead and close it back up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put in my NVMe SSD. Basically, this is just a hard drive, but they're super fast. So you definitely wanna get some of these and put your operating system on it. You can get some that are up to two terabytes. They're a little pricey, but if you just want one super fast hard drive, this is what you need in your computer. Next up comes my cooler. Now, when you buy your processors, sometimes they come with fans, but basically you always need some type of cooler to go along with your processor. These things put off a lot of heat and they need to stay cool. Basically think of it like someone at the gym running very hard, you're gonna get super hot. And if you don't have anything to cool you off, you know, you're gonna get heat stroke or something. <laughs> so basically you put a cooler on the processor. The paste you see me putting on here is thermal paste. It's gonna help take the heat off of the processor and lead it up to the radiator with the fan on it, basically blowing the heat off. There's also options to liquid cool your processor if you want to as well. There's a lot of companies that will make all-in-one liquid coolers where basically instead of it being just a fan, you have two pumps with liquid in it that are also taking the heat off and then blowing off everything from the radiator as well. So just different options here. I went with this because my case is super small so this just fits in and makes more sense. After you have your cooler installed, you do have to hook the fan up to your motherboard. Basically, there's a fan header for the processor itself, and that's where you connect your fan. Next, I'm gonna install my memory. This motherboard is small, so it only has two slots, but generally most motherboards will have four slots for your memory. Make sure to check the specs of your motherboard and see how much RAM it can actually handle and then pick what's right for you and your machine and plop it in there. And now I'm all done prepping my motherboard. I can actually start putting this inside my case. While building computers is super important for your business, another thing you need to make sure you do is build your online presence with this video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an online platform to help you build your website and online presence. If you're a creative, artist, or business owner, Squarespace is gonna be great for you because they have lots of different templates that basically fit any type of person who wants to make a website. I myself, as a wedding photographer and educator, use it for educating others as well as booking wedding clients. I'm able to quickly and easily get inside my website and make changes whenever I want to. And if I have any troubles, their customer support is super awesome, really. You wanna hit them up because they are the best in the industry. On top of websites, portfolios, and blogs, you can also sell products, which is the biggest selling point for Squarespace because not only can you have a portfolio, but you can have a store on the same website. You don't have to separate anything at all. 
And don't forget to check out any of the other features that Squarespace also has, like email list, email marketing, scheduling. I mean, really, they have it all. Make sure to check out the link in the description below for 10% off of your first website or domain. Thank you again, Squarespace, for sponsoring this video. Before you install your motherboard, make sure to put the back plate on your case. The back plate basically shows what every port is on the back of your computer, whether it's USB or audio ports or anything of that sort. Really, if you forget to do this, you basically have to take your computer all the way apart again just to put it in. After you've done your back plate, you can go ahead and start putting your motherboard into your case. Again, this is a super small case, so it has a very specific process to how you're gonna hook everything together. Once you have your motherboard in your case, make sure to screw it down. After screwing down your motherboard, you'll wanna start connecting your case's cables. Basically, most cases come with some USB ports on the outside of the case, as well as maybe a headphone jack and the power button itself. But that stuff needs to be able to speak to your motherboard. So there'll be cables already inside of your case. Go ahead and hook those up to your motherboard in their correct spots. If you're not sure where to put them, generally your motherboard's manual is gonna tell you how to do that. Now that I hooked up the case cables to my motherboard, it's time to install my graphics card. But since this case is so small, it has riser cables, which basically lets me install my graphics card somewhere else. So putting in this cable is the same as installing your graphics card. If you have a larger case than me, you'll be putting your graphics card into the PCIe slot. So I'm just about done now and it's time to install the power supply. This is how you get power to your computer. Now with the power supply, there's a whole bunch of cables you'll have to connect to it, which also connect to your motherboard. Basically each piece that you installed earlier needs power as well. And the power supply supplies all of that to your computer. So there's a CPU cable to power your processor. There's the main power that powers the whole motherboard. There's cables to power all of your hard drives you have installed, and so on and so forth. This honestly is probably the most annoying part of building a PC. I just can't stand it. And you also want to cable manage to make everything look nice on the inside. Working in a case this small, this part is also really annoying and you kind of have to know how to run things, which is why, again, I suggest it don't start your first ever build in a small form factor case. Really, you will regret it. I was only able to build in this case after building now in three different cases. So just to give you a perspective, like really, don't start with small form factor. So I finally have all my power cables in and ready to go. So now I can install the very last part, which is the graphics card. Again, in this case, the graphics card is on the other side of the case, so it's connecting to the riser cables. But generally, in a more normal case, you're just connecting your graphics card directly to your motherboard in one of the PCIe slots. And now that my graphics card is in, I can close up the case and we're all done. And last but not least is to turn on the machine, make sure it's working, and install your operating system. Which again, this is running Mac OS, so this is my little Hackintosh Mini, as I like to call it.
And that's all you need to do to build your own computer. Really, it is not a hard process. And if you're worried about building, honestly, just do it. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love the process. You're gonna save money and you can have a powerful machine for like half the cost of an Apple computer. So in the comments below, let me know if you're team PC, team Mac, and also if you've ever built your own machine. I'd love to hear about the specs of your machine and your first building experience as well. Also, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to help out if I can. So I hope this helped out in giving you the confidence to build your own machine. Definitely give it a try. I would absolutely recommend it for everybody. Like I said, at this point, I can't go back to just buying computers. Building is so much better. Thanks again for hanging out on the channel. And if you like that information, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and I will be with you all next time. All right, peace.